Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, At Home with Willowberry. Or if you're new, welcome. But where have you been? I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Valerie, and in today's video, we take a trip to a local farm, and I make a delicious country dinner. So if you're interested, I hope you can stick around and enjoy the video. We went to farm day at a local farm, and they had some really cute and sweet animals. We were asking all types of questions about raising farm animals, and we told them about our plans to start a little hobby farm. It turns out that they actually sell some of their animals, and people come from all over to get their animals from this family of farmers. They're talking about putting together homestead startup packages, where you can get all your farm animals in a one-stop shopping deal. Maybe when it comes time for us to start buying our goats, chicken, and pigs, we can come back here and get everything we need to start our little farm. I fell in love with these miniature donkeys. These are called Jerusalem donkeys. Jerusalem donkeys are defined by the cross on their back and no two are alike. We were told that you should keep a donkey or two in with your goats. Apparently they make good defense against predators. I'm not sure these miniature donkeys qualify, so I'm pretty sure we'll be getting a standard donkey, but I'd love to have two or three of these miniature Jerusalem donkeys. They're really sweet, and I definitely want sweet, gentle animals on our hobby farm. We had some grain to feed the animals. I've fed goats, sheep, and donkeys before, but never a cow. I've never fed a cow, and let me tell you what, it was not what I expected. They have some crazy tongues. It was quite the experience. If you've ever fed a cow before, then you'll know what I'm talking about. They are really cute cows, though. I'm trying to talk Tim into getting us a milk cow, but that might be a long ways off. I think we're going to start off with three or four goats, a few chickens and a rooster, and a couple of pigs. Look at all these cuties. I didn't realize how many different types of chickens there are. Tim wants chickens that lay Easter eggs. Apparently there's a chicken that lays different color eggs and they're called Easter Eggers. According to Google, Easter Egg chickens have a delightful, amusing personality. So we're definitely going to have to get a few of those for our little farm. I think this chicken is called a silver lace Polish chicken. So beautiful. They were making homemade apple butter. Tim and my oldest son love some apple butter and it was neat to see how it's made. We were told that it takes probably eight to 10 hours for it to fully cook down and it needs to be stirred constantly. They also said there's a silver dollar in the bottom of the 100 year old pot. The silver dollar is supposed to keep the apple butter from sticking to the bottom of the pot. We had a lot of fun and I learned so much. I really hope we're able to get some of our farm animals from this sweet family of farmers. After our trip to the farm, it started to rain, so I came straight home and took a nice long nap, and I woke up just in time to make dinner. Tonight I'm making country fried steak with milk gravy, homemade mashed potatoes, and corn. I've never made country fried steak before. Tim and I really liked it, but the kids weren't impressed. Pretty sure they would have preferred just plain old fried chicken. For the country fried steak, I'm using cube steak, and I'm going to be coating it in a flour mixture seasoned with salt, pepper, paprika, and seasoned salt. 
and then I'm going to dip it in an egg mixture also seasoned with salt, pepper, and paprika. I'll be coating it again with the flour mixture and then frying it in a pan of peanut oil for about three to five minutes on each side. After frying the steaks, I place them on a wire rack in the oven at 200 degrees to keep them warm. Since Tim took over as manager of the mobile home park and it's the first of the month, it's been pretty busy around here with all the trailer park residents dropping off their rent checks. It's been really nice to get to meet all the neighbors. So that's who I'm talking to right now. One of the neighbors stopped by and stayed a while. So we were just chatting while I started dinner. For mashed potatoes, I peeled and washed five russet potatoes and cut them into four. I placed them in a pot of cold water and brought to a boil. I then let them simmer until they were tender. I just opened up two cans of corn and I added butter, salt, and pepper. But of course the can opener wanted to give me a fit so I had to get Tim in there to help me fix it. I decided to make some sweet tea. Do y'all see that 25 pound bag of sugar over there? I need to find something to store it in. I've been storing dried beans, flour, rice, and oatmeal in five gallon buckets, but they're hard for me to open. So I think I'm going to go get some clear plastic containers from Walmart to start storing them in. Well anyway, for the tea I'm using 10 Lipton tea bags and 2 cups of sugar. I bring a pot of water to a boil and then I remove it from the heat and then I add the tea bags. I like to steep it for about 15 minutes and then I pour it into a pitcher with sugar. I then top off the pitcher with cold water. And in my opinion, it's the best sweet tea there is. Of course, you can always add less sugar, but we like it sweet, sweet. This is what I consider a messy meal. Anytime I fry anything in flour, I make the biggest messes. So now that everything else is prepped and cooking, I can concentrate on frying the cube steak. I just set up a little assembly line of the meat, flour mixture, and egg mixture, and then start dipping, coating, and frying. The potatoes are nice and tender, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some butter, salt, and pepper. There's no measurements to give, I just add to taste. I didn't feel like dragging out the hand mixer, so I'm just going to use the handheld potato masher and just start mashing.
the last batch of meat is almost finished cooking. So once I pull the steak out of the pan, I'm going to get my mess cleaned up and then I'm going to get started on the milk gravy. For the milk gravy, I'm using about 3 tablespoons of butter and 3 tablespoons of flour to make a roux. Once the flour and butter are dark in color, I'll add about 3 to 4 cups of milk and stir constantly until thickened. If it's too thick, just keep adding more milk till your desired consistency. The gravy is looking good, so I'd say dinner is ready, y'all. I'm going to get dinner served up for Tim and I. The boys were starving. Well, what am I talking about? They always think they're dying of hunger, and they didn't want to wait for the gravy, so they've already eaten without us. So it's just Tim and I. But these boys don't know what they're missing out on. The gravy was the best part. Well, actually, my youngest son wanted gravy with his potatoes, but he was too impatient to wait. Dinner always seems to run late when I'm filming, so they went ahead and ate before us. But the youngest came back for seconds just in time for the gravy and he loved it. Dinner was delicious, y'all, but now it's time to clean up. But first, how about a little visit with Max and Willow? I wasn't able to get outside to see the sunset tonight, but I thought I'd go ahead and share one of my favorite sunsets with you all. What a mess! Who's ready for some major speed cleaning motivation? Here we go, y'all!
I guess that about wraps it up for another video. And I sure hope y'all enjoyed it. Thank y'all so much for being here and spending some time with me. And I hope to see you in my next video. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Bye.